Hi everyone, this lesson is on six different skin findings we can see in pancreatic cancer. Before we talk about those skin findings, let's discuss briefly what pancreatic cancer is and some risk factors for getting it. So pancreatic cancer is a cancer of the pancreas, and the pancreas is a digestive and endocrine organ with a variety of functions. So it not only produces endocrine hormones like insulin, but it also produces exocrine or digestive enzymes that help us digest our food. Risk factors for getting pancreatic cancer include the following, tobacco smoking, chronic pancreatitis, so having chronic inflammation of the pancreas can increase our risk for pancreatic cancer, having obesity, type 2 diabetes can also increase our risk for pancreatic cancer, having a family history of pancreatic cancer, and also certain dietary factors can also increase our risk for pancreatic cancer as well. Now the prevalence of pancreatic cancer increases with increasing age, and the median age of onset is 70. And this is an important cancer to know about and to detect early because it has a poor prognosis. Now, a lot of times it's going to be found quite late and certain signs and symptoms that patients can experience include back pain, abdominal pain can also occur as well, and also jaundice. And sometimes it can be what we call painless jaundice, where the patient has yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes and there's no other symptoms. There's no pain associated with it. So that can also be a finding of pancreatic cancer. Now let's discuss some of the signs and symptoms that we can see on the skin in pancreatic cancer. So one of them is pruritus, which is an itching sensation. So there can be generalized itching, so itching all around the body. And this itching is going to be progressive, meaning that it's going to worsen over time. It can be very intense, in fact, and especially as it progresses. And this pruritus can occur in pancreatic cancer prior to the jaundice. So this can be an earlier finding of pancreatic cancer. And this pruritus is going to be due to accumulation of bile salts. Now, why do we have an accumulation of bile salts in pancreatic cancer? So if you look at this image here, here's the pancreas. We have the gallbladder, and then we have the common bile duct that is draining bile and bile salts into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. Now, the problem is that the common bile duct has to cross past the pancreas. And if there's a big pancreatic mass, you can imagine that there can be a blockage or a compression of the common bile duct leading to a backup of bile salts that are not able to be released from the gallbladder. So then they end up spilling back into the blood. So this is why we end up getting bile salts in the blood and this causes patients to get quite itchy. And over time, this impingement or blocking become worse. So we get more and more bile salts over time. So this is why it is progressive as well. Another important Skin finding that can occur in pancreatic cancer is known as Trousseau sign. This is actually a very important clinical finding that is important on exams that is associated with pancreatic cancer. And Trousseau sign is also known as migratory thrombophlebitis. So it has to do with thrombi, which are clots that occur in blood vessels, causing inflammation of the blood vessel or phlebitis. This is where we get the name thrombophlebitis. And a key part of this is that it's migratory, meaning that we can get inflammation of one area, say on the arm, we get a sort of reddened, swollen blood vessel that's painful, and then that can resolve and all of a sudden it can move to another location on the arm or on some other part of the body, and then so on. It can move to another part of the body. So it's migratory. It'll move around. This is an important finding of pancreatic cancer as well. A third possible finding we can see in pancreatic cancer is Sister Mary Joseph nodes. So Sister Mary Joseph nodes are periembolical lymph nodes. So it's going to be a lymph node that's swollen, enlarged at or near the belly button. And the reason is because this particular lymph node drains the abdomen in the pelvis, and it can become enlarged and prominent in pancreatic cancer and other types of cancer as well, including stomach cancer. And it is indicative of more advanced disease. So as the cancer in the pancreas spreads, it enters into the peritoneum, we can end up getting drainage from the peritoneum toward that particular periembolical lymph node, and we can get a swelling or an enlargement of that lymph node, which is called a Sister Mary Joseph node. This can also be another finding in pancreatic cancer. Another possible finding we can see in pancreatic cancer is pancreatic paniculitis. So pancreatic paniculitis is inflammation of subcutaneous tissue. So it's going to be inflammation of subcutaneous fat. So what we're going to find here is that we're, we can see tender nodules on lower extremities. So that's going to be where we're going to see these most commonly occurring. It can occur in other pancreatic diseases, and it's quite rare in pancreatic cancer, but it can occur. Now, males are more likely to be affected than females, so males are more likely to have this particular finding than four males for every one female. 
and pancreatic enzymes are likely the cause of this particular finding. So what is theorized to happen is that pancreatic enzymes, especially lipase, which is an enzyme that breaks down fat, likely spills out of the pancreas. So due to cancer's changes in the pancreas, in pancreatic cancer, we get a spilling out of pancreatic enzymes like lipase. They enter into systemic circulation, and then they can end up in parts of the periphery that can then act on subcutaneous fat, leading to these types of painful nodules. So this is a potential reason why we can get pancreatic paniculitis. So again, those enzymes like lipase damage peripheral tissues. And then another possible finding we can see is malignant acanthosis nigricans. So this is what malignant acanthosis nigricans look like. It's called malignant because it's going to be where this acanthosis nigricans is associated with an underlying cancer. We can see it in other types of conditions like obesity and type 2 diabetes. But in this case, if it is due to a pancreatic cancer, we're going to call it malignant acanthosis nigricans. And what is this particular skin finding? Well, it is a thickened hyperpigmented skin lesion. So if you were to actually touch the skin lesion, it's going to be thickened. It's like thickened skin. It's hyperpigmented, meaning that it is darker than the surrounding skin. It's velvety in appearance. And the key with regards to malignant acanthosis nigricans compared to acanthosis nigricans that occurs in type 2 diabetes, for instance, is that it has a rapid onset and rapidly increases in size. So it can just all of a sudden appear. We can get a lot of these types of large, thickened skin lesions in many different parts of the body. But most commonly, we're going to find it in intertriginous areas where skin rubs on skin. So the armpits and the groin, and it can also occur on the neck as well. And then another finding we can see in pancreatic cancer is acanthosis palmaris. So this is also known as tripe palms. This also has thickened skin, and it can also be described as velvety, but this particular skin is going to be found on the palms of the hands. So it's going to be palms only. So if we were to look at the hands, we can actually see skin thickening exaggerated skin ridges on the fingers. So we can actually see more prominent skin ridges. So your fingerprints look more prominent than they used to. And there can be hyperpigmentation or a darkening of the skin of the palms of the hand. So that can all be findings of acanthosis palmaris. And it often occurs with malignant acanthosis nigricans. So it is often associated with that last skin finding we just talked about. And this particular skin finding on the hand is strongly associated with gastrointestinal malignancies, including gastric cancer as well. So this is another possible finding that we can see in pancreatic cancer and some other cancers. Please check out my other lessons on pancreatic cancer if you want more information on other signs and symptoms and how it's diagnosed and treated. Please consider joining as a member for members-only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon.